Here with Reaction, the author of Counterfeit Lies, host of War Stories, Colonel Oliver North is with us. Colonel, before I get to that, Arab countries and whether or not they'll join in, I think the, there is this mysterious reluctance and re resistance. The president last week, the Islamic State is not Islamic. Now you have uh, Prime Minister Cameron saying they're monsters and they're not Muslim. Why is there a, a, a resistance to identify radical Islam for what it is? Well, because they think by doing so, and I'm not trying to put myself in their shoes, but clearly they've spoken and written about this kind of thing. They don't want to try to alienate 1.4 billion is Muslims around the world. They, they don't want to describe what's really happening. And that is radical Islam is alive and well. It is not simply ISIS or ISIL or the Islamic State. But what you end up with is instead of Operation Iraqi Freedom or Operation Enduring Freedom, you, you now have Operation Enduring Confusion. As of yesterday, the O team apparently decided we may really be at war with ISIS, at least for now. Well, and John Kerry that, flipped and flopped. Well, You're referring to his interview with Bob Schieffer. Yes, exactly. And of course, now Kerry is saying that he's building a robust co coalition to take on what is today the biggest, best armed, wealthiest and most bloody terrorist organ organization or force in history. Here's a, a few of the challenges that they face, Sean. Number one, no one has offered to put boots on the ground in Syria. Now that's going to be a real problem if you're going to expect that you're going to have the so-called moderate oppos opposition take them out with airstrikes. Airstrikes are great, but it takes rough men with rifles to seize territory, liberate hostages, and catch killers. And this, from a report I get every day from people on the ground out where I actually belong in, in Erbil, this they are saying it's going to take at least a year to re-equip and mentor and field a multi-sectarian Iraqi army. They also say the U.S. has yet to deliver any reasonable amount of arms and equipment to the Peshmerga, and that it's going to take 8 to 12 months to Whoa. recruit that equip and train the so-called Free Syrian Army of 5,000 well, fighters to take on to take on 35,000 ISIS fighters from 70 nations but the, right now. But the Syrian rebels, it was reported in the Hill this weekend, agreed to a ceasefire with ISIS. Number one, and and Rand Paul, I think, has made a pretty compelling case in this sense that those arms could very well end up in the hands of ISIS because they have before. Well, the arms going to Peshmerga are desperately needed for people who actually support us. They're now getting support, of course, from Tehran. And Albania has signed on to help them. But the problem we've got today is that al-Baghdadi is going to produce another snuff flick, a, a propaganda video with another person being beheaded, bragging his coalition is bigger than Obama's. He's got 70 nations worth of, of so-called ISIS Islamic jihadists fighting in his 35,000-man army that grows every single day. And reaching out yeah. to the Iranians and the Russians has never been a good idea. Let me uh, ask the Russians need to hang on to their base in TARDIS, and the Iranians are building nuclear weapons. Last question. Diane Foley, the mother of James Foley, uh, in an interview reported by the UPI, actually said that her and her family were intimidated three times, and they were forbidden from going to the media and if they attempted to raise money to pay off for their a, a ransom for their for their son and that they were threatened with prosecution three times now this becomes a delicate issue i don't think the united states should be involved in it but if they wanted to individually do that who are we to stop them well unfortunately there is a law on the books that forbids the paying of ransom we're, we're, we're talking about dealing with terrorist organizations and it, ISIS is a terrorist organization recognized as such. And, and now everyone's going to raise the comparison between Bergdahl and what could have or maybe should have been done to help Jim Foley and Sokolov and, and now a British aid worker. The reality of it is the law has changed. I, I know something about talking to families of hostages. I've been there. I've done that. But the law was different at the time. And the law that passed in, I think it's 2002, changed the world for it. And so. I don't. I hope to God they didn't threaten the family. That's but what she claims. Family, Three I times that. he intimidated I, us with the message. Sean, I, we, that's I what their quote is. But yeah. what I'm saying is, it would be responsible for someone with compassion to explain to the family what the law says, and then let the family go do what they had to do. Because we know that the New York Times was ready, willing, and able to put up money to get their David Road freed. Well, he so. knows that. We know that.